So welcome to the uh, new lecture on uh, foundation. So foundation is also a portion which is there in the third module. And uh, this is actually a short session which uh, gives an introduction about foundation. And uh, also tell something about the bearing capacity of the soil. Also di already discussed about foundation in the while we are discussing about the components of the building. So you know that the different parts of the building are mainly classified into substructure, superstructure and also the foundation, also the plinth. So the foundation belongs to the substructure. As the most important part of the building, it is to be properly designed to suit the soil characteristics of the soil available at the site. So you know that foundation are the structural components of the building which are in direct contact with the ground. So foundation is the component which is directly in contact with the ground or the soil beneath. And this component transmits the load of the superstructure to the ground. So the superstructure is having a particular load. There are different components there in the superstructure and it is having a particular load. And this load is transferred to the foundation and ultimately the foundation transfers this load to the ground or soil around the foundation. So the ultimate function of the foundation is to transfer the load to the soil. Even this is the ultimate function. The foundation also serves some other purpose. So the first one is the even distribution of loads. So the foundation distributes the load coming from the superstructure over a large area. So that the load intensity at its base does not exceed the bearing capacity of soil. So the foundation distributes the load evenly to a large area so that there doesn't occur any kind of settlements or any kind of issues so it has the capacity to distribute the load evenly over a large area and the next function of the foundation is the safety against sliding and overtaining so as i shown here you know what is sliding and what is overtaining see the foundation provides sufficient safety against sliding and overturning. See actually you just imagine uh, a building which is not having a foundation. So it's always susceptible to sliding and overturning. So the foundation protects the structure against the sliding and also the overturning. And the next uh, function of the foundation is to minimize the differential settlement. So differential settlement is actually an issue which is occurring to some uh, different types of buildings. This is actually, uh, you know, uh, the PISA. This is actually due to differential settlement. See, the soil underneath is having different bearing capacity at different points. See, the e building in the area soil building settlement and sidel settlement This is called the differential settlement. See, So the differential settlement will cause cracks. One side settle and side settle And that creates cracks. So all the new non-uniform loads from the superstructure are distributed properly on the subsoil by the foundation and hence the differential settlement is minimized. See actually the differential settlement means unequal settlement at different parts of the building. Unequal settlement at different parts of the building uh, is called uh, the differential settlement. And the next uh, function of the foundation is providing safety against undermining. See, the building is protected by the foundation against scoring or undermining due to the water flow or burrowing of animals or somehow. You can see here, there is no soil. See like this, soil is scoring. That may be due to the flowing water or uh, burrowing of animals anyhow. So, if you undermining vacant space, the mold, model or structure will fail, will fall down. So foundation also provides safety against undermining. And the next function is it provides a firm and level surface. 
See, the foundation provide a level and firm surface for the construction of superstructure. Superstructure safe to construct a anula with strong and a level surface is provided by the foundation. So this is the these are the different functions or the purpose of foundation. There is the even distribution of load, then the safety against the sliding and overturning, then the reduction of differential settlement, safety against undermining, and also it provides a firm and a level surface. So then, see before going into different types of foundation and so on, we need to discuss about an important term called the bearing capacity. Bearing cap. So, actually, simply we can say the bearing capacity is the supporting power of soil without failure. Supporting for supporting power. Etra matram load in soil support yano la capacity under without failure so you know that all civil engineering structures whether they are buildings dams bridges etc are built on soils that's of course sure the foundation of the structure should be so designed that the soil below does not fail in shear nor there is excessive settlement of the structure so one reason is that soil fail out fail out Matram load in a support capacity that is called the bearing capacity. You can see in this figure foundation comes in contact with the soil. Soil foundation of the mill contact under. And this is the portion where the foundation comes in contact with the soil. Foundation is to soil might contact with the portion. So e portion lake yana, e portion load yana, the load is getting transferred from foundation to the soil. So this portion. E soil portion le ori karna vishale mulla failure onda van parilla. So how much weight or load this soil can support without failure? That is called the bearing capacity. So the conventional design of foundation design is based on the concept of bearing capacity. So soil when stressed due to loading, it tends to deform. We know that. So anything, uh, not only soil, any uh, anything will tend to deform if you are uh, you know apply some load so, so the resistance to deformation of the soil depends upon the water content the bulk density etc see the maximum load per unit area which the soil or rock can carry without yielding or displacement is termed as the bearing capacity of the soil so simply we can say the supporting power of the soil see actually the soil properties of the capacity of the soil like the density, permeability, the allowable and differential settlement, the physical features of foundation like type, size, shape, etc. So sand, dense, see we know that dense sand will have more bearing capacity than loose sand. See, we know that we have to do the soil and the bearing capacity. If we have to do the soil and the firm, we have to do the firmness, we have to do the strength and the strength. And also, we have to particular place to travel here. We feel the strength. We feel the strength. We feel the strength. Then, again, we feel the difference. We feel the difference. So, there are different factors which depend on the bearing capacity of the soil. So before going into detail about the bearing capacity of the soil, uh, we need to uh, look into two terms. So the first one is called the gross pressure. Next is net pressure intensity. Gross pressure intensity. So it is the total pressure at the base of the footing due to the weight of the superstructure, self weight and the earth weight. See total pressure at the base of the footing. E footing in the base is the total pressure in the gross Pressure intensity and the varena. A pressure in the varena superstructural nulla weight, a footing in the self weight, and also overburden pressure. Overburden pressure in the varena, earth fill in the anam, overburden pressure in the varena, footing in a molil varena, soil in the pressure. A foundation of molil varena, soil in the pressure. That is called overburden pressure. So gross pressure intensity is the overall combination of this 
weight of the superstructure, self weight of the foundation and the overburden pressure. And the next term is called the net pressure intensity. It is the total pressure at the base of the fluting due to the weight of the superstructure and self weight. See superstructure and the weight um, self weight um, kudi oru mechu varunnadiyana net pressure intensity ennu parayunna and here the overburden pressure is not taken into account ivide overburden pressure consider cheyunnilla allengil ee footing il allengil foundation moolil varunna soil la pressure consider cheyunnilla so that is the difference between gross pressure intensity and the net pressure intensity then we are moving into uh, different bearing capacities so the first one is so uh, the first one is ultimate bearing capacity ultimate bearing capacity so it is the minimum gross pressure intensity at the base of the foundation that soil fails in shear or ultimate bearing capacity can also be said as the maximum load that the soil can withstand or the point at which soil starts displacing or fails can be said as ultimate bearing capacity of the soil it's the ultimate capacity it's a maximum capacity of the soil so normally uh, the term bearing capacity is actually the ultimate bearing capacity when we say about uh, simply the bearing capacity it does means ultimate bearing capacity so here the gross pressure intensity is taken um, not that the gross pressure intensity is taken remember the gross pressure intensity i already told you what is the gross pressure intensity and what is the net pressure intensity so here gross pressure intensity is considered so i'll tell an example see actually um, that is shown here take a rubber band and stretch it oppositely on both the sides so rubber band has an ultimate uh, it actually has an elastic property and it regain back to the original position but if you start stretching it more and more it may break at a certain point so that point is the ultimate point of the rubber band where it loses its elasticity and won't come back to its original position so here the same can be applied to the soil also soil has an ultimate bearing capacity where it can bear the load up to a certain limit after that the soil starts displacing or settles so this point is called as the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil so the maximum load that the soil can withstand or the minimum gross pressure intensity at which the soil fails that means see sometimes uh, if there is a gross pressure intensity of 10 pascal the soil may be safe or the soil uh, can be able to uh, may be able to withstand load, uh, this pressure other sometimes it may become 20 pascal appozhum ee uh, soil is safe irikum it becomes 30 pascal the gross pressure intensity appozhum soil safe irikum then it becomes 40 pascal appozhum safe irikum and the gross pressure intensity may become 50 pascal so if 50 pascal avo will may starts to fail so anganeyana endundengil the minimum gross pressure intensity is 50 pascal so the minimum gross pressure intensity at which the soil fail and that is called the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil so that's it and the next um, the one net is ultimate bearing capacity the net ultimate bearing capacity so it is the minimum net pressure intensity at the base of the foundation that soil fails in shear so here the net pressure intensity is considered in ultimate bearing capacity we are taking the gross pressure intensity and here it is a net pressure intensity at which the soil starts fail so remember what is net pressure intensity here in net pressure intensity the overburden pressure is not considered so if the npa value npa value is a particular minimum or the particular value agumbo, the soil starts fail so that minimum value is the uh, that minimum value is called the net ultimate bearing capacity so it can be also also be said as uh, like you know that a part of ultimate bearing capacity is used up in supporting the soil overburden so the remaining bearing capacity value of the soil after the overburden pressure is detected is the net ultimate bearing capacity so for example like i said ipo 100 kN per meter square ultimate bearing capacity of soil 
ആൻഡ് അവിടെ ഒരു ഓവർ ബേഡൻ പ്രഷർ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു ട്വൻറ്റി ആണ് എന്ന് കൺസിഡർ ചെയ്യുക സോ ഈ ട്വൻറ്റി ഓവർ ബേഡൻ പ്രഷറിനെ സപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വിത്ത്സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റിയിൽ നിന്ന് ഒരു ട്വൻറ്റി കിലോന്യൂട്ടൺ പെർ മീറ്റർ സ്ക്വയർ ഈസ് യൂസ്ഡ് സോ അതിനുശേഷം ആ ട്വൻറ്റി കിലോന്യൂട്ടൺ പെർ ന്യൂട്ടൺ കിലോന്യൂട്ടൺ പെർ മീറ്റർ സ്ക്വയർ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഓവർ ബേഡൻ പ്രഷറിനെ സപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യാനായി യൂസ് ചെയ്തു ആൻഡ് ദി റിമെയിനിങ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് മൈനസ് ട്വൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റി കിലോമീറ്റർ പെർ മീറ്റർ സ്ക്വയർ ദാറ്റ് റിമെയിനിങ് ഈസ് ദ നെറ്റ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി വിത്തൌട്ട് കൺസിഡറിങ് ദ ഓവർ ബേഡൻ പ്രഷർ ഓർ ഡിഡക്റ്റിംഗ് ബൈ ഡിഡക്റ്റിംഗ് ദ ഓവർ ബേഡൻ പ്രഷർ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് ദ നെറ്റ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ മിനിമം നെറ്റ് പ്രഷർ ഇൻറ്റൻസിറ്റി അറ്റ് ദ ബേസ് ഓഫ് ദ ഫൗണ്ടേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് സോയിൽ സ്റ്റാർട്ട്സ് ഫെയിൽ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കാൽക്കുലേറ്റഡ് ബൈ സബ്സ്ട്രാക്റ്റിംഗ് ദ ഓവർ ബേഡൻ പ്രഷർ ഫ്രോം ദ ക്ലോസ് സോ അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റിയേക്കാൾ വാല്യൂ ലെസ് ആയിരിക്കും നെറ്റ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റിയുടെ സോ ദ അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഈസ് മോർ ആൻഡ് ദ നെറ്റ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഈസ് ലെസ് കമ്പയർഡ് ടു അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ആൻഡ് വൺ ഈസ് കോൾഡ് ദ നെറ്റ് സേഫ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ സേഫ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ആൻഡ് സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ടൈം ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എ സേഫ് ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി സി ലൈക്ക് let us consider an example of a small plastic chair the small plastic chair is actually made for kids and it can bear a capacity of 10 kg you just assume and suppose if an adult sat on it then the chair will be broken sure the same case is applied to soil also if more load is applied on the soil than its resistance then the soil starts displacing or breaking which leads to settlement of course so in order to keep the structure safe safe bearing capacity of the soil is calculated on the field at different points and design and selection of footing is taken accordingly on the basis of this safe bearing capacity so for that we use a term called factor of safety factor of safety so this safety factor gives us the net safety bearing capacity that means the net ultimate bearing capacity divided by factor of safety gives you the net safe bearing capacity see actually uh, most probably the value of uh, factor of safety ranges from 2 to 5 so if the net ultimate bearing capacity is 100 kN per meter square assume and the factor of safety is 2 then the net safety uh, safe bearing capacity will be 100 by 2 that is 50 kN per meter square so the designs will be based on this net safe bearing capacity that means see korchu koodal load vannalum adu kondu thane endha irikkum idu safe aayirikkum 100 kN per meter square aanu oru particular soil inde net ultimate bearing capacity engilum nammal adine factor of safety kondu divide cheyidu ആ നെറ്റ് സേഫ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റിക്കുള്ള ഇത് മാത്രമേ നമ്മൾ ഡിസൈൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആണ് എങ്കിലും വി വിൽ ബി ഡിസൈനിങ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് അത് എടുക്കും എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിലും നെറ്റ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആണ് എങ്കിലും നമ്മൾ ഫാക്ടർ ഓഫ് സേഫ്റ്റി കൊണ്ട് ഡിവൈഡ് ചെയ്ത് ഫിഫ്റ്റിക്കുള്ളതേ നമ്മൾ ഡിസൈൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് സോ ദാറ്റ് കുറച്ച് എക്സ്ട്രാ ലോഡ് വന്നാലും സോയിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഫൗണ്ട് സോയിൽ ഫൗണ്ടേഷനും ഒക്കെ സേഫ് ആയിരിക്കും സൊ വി നോ ദ ദർ ആർ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഫാക്ടേഴ്സ് വിച്ച് ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ഓൺ ദ ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദ സോയിൽ സോ ഈവൻ എ വേസ്റ്റ് സെനാരിയോ കേം ഏറ്റവും വേസ്റ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സിനോറിയോ വന്നെങ്കിൽ പോലും നമ്മുടെ സ്ട്രക്ചർ സേഫ് ആയിരിക്കണം സോ ദാറ്റ് വി യൂസ് നെറ്റ് സേഫ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് നെറ്റ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഡിവൈഡ് ബൈ ഫാക്ടർ ഓഫ് സേഫ്റ്റി ഗീവ്സ് യു ദ നെറ്റ് സേഫ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി സോ ദ സോ റിമെമ്പർ ദ ത്രീ ടൈംസ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി സോ ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ദ മാക്സിമം വാല്യൂ ആൻഡ് ദ ഗ്രോസ് പ്രഷർ ഇൻറ്റൻസിറ്റി ഈസ് ടേക്കൺ ഇൻ ടു അക്കൗണ്ട് ഹിയർ ആൻഡ് ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഈസ് നെറ്റ് അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ബെയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി Um, so gross ultimate bearing uh, ultimate bearing capacity il ninnu over burden pressure detect cheyumbo we get the net ultimate bearing capacity and the next is net safe bearing capacity so net ultimate bearing capacity divided by factor of safety gives you net safe bearing capacity so that's the three types of bearing capacities so if the bearing capacity of the soil at shallow depth is sufficient to safety safely take the load of a shallow safety take the load then we provide a shallow foundation 
else we will go for deep foundation so the two types of foundations are shallow foundations and deep foundation and there are different types of shallow foundation there are different types of deep foundation and uh, we will discuss about it uh, later on the next lecture so that's all about this lecture thank you